Hello, this is an introduction to TMS at the ROM, specifically for Art and Culture Departments. This is the entry screen, the welcome screen, you might say, to TMS. And this shows the various components that make up TMS. You can see along here at the top. Uh, this first one is objects. And so with this, if you want to find objects, then you would uh, query there are three main types of querying, which we will cover in uh, another seminar, um, and uh, get to the objects like that. We also have this module um, called constituents, and constituents are individuals or institutions, groups of people, shall we say. And so if you're trying to find an individual, an artist, a donor, a loaning institution, anything like that, then this is the approach to take. Um, so if, for instance, you're trying to find objects donated by one person, you don't search for the objects, you always search for the person. So decide what it is you're actually looking for. Here are, is the media module uh, where you will find any media in uh, TMS, mostly related to other modules like objects. Exhibitions, so these are exhibitions that uh, are related to objects, uh, and we do have some exhibitions, so you can uh, uh, have a look at this at some time. Loans will not be covered in the seminars at all, since that's a registration issue, as is shipping. Uh, the bibliography we uh, may have business with, so that may come up later. Events may be relevant. Sites certainly are relevant. We have some sites in the database related to excavations and things like that. Uh, so again, if you're trying to find a specific site, you might want to look for a site rather than the objects. And then there's insurance, which again, we won't be covering much. So these are the main modules, and you need to decide what exactly is it you're looking for before you start looking. So we're going to look at objects today. Um, as I said, there are three main querying types, uh, which we will cover in a specific seminar. Uh, what we're going to do today is just look at the user form. So we'll just look at this object here. So this is a the, the main form for the user form for for using uh, accessing the collection uh, here you can see it's uh, this is how many objects are in this query and we query for one so we have one of one um, this is the object number of the record we're looking at at the present uh, sometimes called accession number at the wrong this is the TMS department uh, these are old names for TMS sections for sections in uh, art and culture, uh, which may get changed at some time, possibly not in the foreseeable future and under, under the circumstances. But you know, this is in the Far Eastern section. Um, this is where the object actually is. So this uh, transaction, this uh, group of fields actually, has the accession number, object number, the fact that it's in the ROM and the room number. Object count is more relevant to objects that actually comprise more than one thing. Uh, we have a number of objects which are actually a number of things put together, and the way we record that is by putting a number in here. An example, for instance, would be in our archaeological departments. We have a lot of broken pottery and, and lithics from excavation, which may be recorded just by the number of a box. So this may actually be a box number in the database and the object count may be how many pieces of pottery are in that box. Uh, location remarks are remarks related to this location. Number of components is uh, related to some rather old data which may not be particularly relevant. On the other side here we have a photograph there's unfortunately only one photograph of this thing, otherwise there'd be a link here to all of the, the photographs. 
Um, this is a classification which is relevant to the online collections. Uh, a status flag, uh, we don't have any status flags on this object and we'll probably do a special one on status flags specifically. Uh, ROM RID is from our old database system. Object ID is from this database system. They're both machine generated numbers, which you probably won't have much to do with, uh, but they're more back end things. And these buttons down here are things that you display for the obvious purposes, like if the start is approved, you click this. This is approved, you see. If it's on display, you might want to click that. If you're putting it online, you click that. Um, I'll do a special seminar on putting things online to talk about those specific fields. Here is what is known as a data view. <clears throat> and this has uh, information which you cannot edit from here. Uh, you, all that information is underneath here. Uh, but this has the tombstone data, the information that appears online. And also you could make uh, uh, a label for a gallery with this, or you could even copy all of it. And I'm hitting control C now. And you notice it shifted down. This doesn't always work. So I see I'm pressing control C repeatedly. And so now I actually have copied this and I can post it into an email or anything else which is quite useful. But basically this tells you that your cataloging now makes sense for it to go online. So underneath here we have this part of the form which you may need to use this bar on the right hand side here to access. Okay, so here is the title. This is one of those fields you cannot edit. See, I'm, I'm typing, you can hear my very loud keyboard trying to type, nothing's happening. Because for this, you need to click on that. This is called an ellipsis, these three buttons. And with that, you get to the curatorial title or title translation or any other title it may have. And to edit that, you now have to press this. And then you can edit it. And you say OK. Or actually, I said uh, cancel, but never mind. Or close. So that's a title. Over here, we have a related concept, the object name. And in fact, if there was no object title, what would display up here in the data view and also online would be the object name. Alternate object names and object types are more complicated, complicated concepts related to the object name, which we'll cover later, but you can read it up, read up about it in the, um, the manual in the meantime. So, under here, we have a link to all the constituents. Remember the whole module of constituents related to this record. So here we have an artist. This is the artist. This is the source, the person that provided it to us, um, the appraiser, two appraisers. So some of these things are actually confidential information. You shouldn't be sharing them. Uh, artist is pretty obvious and it shows up up here. Now. Underneath here, you have another field called Maker Display, which you might say, well, we have this under Artist. But this was a way we used to do it, and we're still doing this to a certain degree. Um, here we have, up in the data view, the name. So I shall copy the name and put it in here. So some of our records look like this. They have a Maker Display, not a constituent, or they have a constituent and a Maker Display. What happens in this case, and if I save this, you see it now displays the maker display rather than the constituent. Um, what is preferable is to actually have, uh, I'll save this again, the constituent, because this is now a database link and we can make this consistent. There's one Tsukiyoka Yoshitoshi, and we're not going to misspell it. If we write it repeatedly, it can be consistent in always the same way and say specifically what they do. It's also very useful when we go to the online collection. So if we go and look at the online collection, here you can see that record. And here is Tsukiyoka. And if you click on that, it's a hot link. And it takes you to all of the objects made by that artist, some of which unfortunately do not seem to have their 
images available. So that's a very useful thing. So there's various reasons why that's a good thing. So otherwise you have maker display. Here you have geography display. So that's quite similar. That's where you write uh, the geography. Um, here we have the geography assistant. And so if you want to change that, you click edit and wait patiently. Still waiting there, there it comes. So here this is like again a whole database, just an assistant it's called, but it's like another database within the database of uh, where the thing's from. So again, this may be something you will be dealing with. You can see there's a whole bunch of different types of geography you might want to display. We'll cancel that. And so you can see this is origin. And here you say origin is Asia, Japan. Now, for the most part in art and culture, we don't do it like this. It looks kind of scruffy. And so what we will say is where it's from here. And so then if we save this, it just says Japan, which is much cleaner. Um, so although this is vastly preferable for constituents to use a constituent uh, module rather than just have the artist in here, this is still somewhat preferable in many ways. But uh, this is preferable because it is more consistent. <clears throat> So, going down the form, here we have material and technique display. Uh, this displays here, woodblock print on paper. So this is the main display of what is it made of and how is it made. We also have these other fields which uh, will tell you the material, how it was made. We group these materials in this field. This is actually a pull down. And so you can see the various types of material. One of these, for instance, is ceramic. Uh, and so all the different types of ceramic, if you want to get all of the pottery, no matter what it's called in material, I could say earthenware, terracotta, uh, porcelain, whatever you say, they're all ceramic. And so you can find all the pottery. Here, material technique remarks is a longer text field to talk about the material and technique remarks. This is <coughs> actually where this ellipsis becomes relevant again. So I told you up here, uh, you need to press this. Um, for object name, it's actually a problem if you press this because we really want to use this just to have the object name. But actually we could have all the object names in here and not see them all. They'd all be hidden behind here and not have these, which we didn't like that. So we want it this way. Um, other fields might be useful because you want to write a lot. So here you press the ellipsis and you can see this is actually a large remark field. And so you could talk to long and to a long extent about how this object is made, perhaps have analytical data and or that sort of thing. So let's go down here. Period display. Let's go use the thing to go down a bit here. Period display. This shows up here, only in this case it doesn't. Um, so here you might want to say a period like Neolithic or Calcolithic or something like that, or a dynasty. You could put dynasty in here. Uh, this, for instance, I think is Edo period. I'll say Edo period for the sale of it just at the moment. And I'll hit Control S to save it. And you can see Edo period appears here. However, it's not required. It's not one of those fields that needs to be filled in. So if you feel if the responsible curator tells you this doesn't need to be filled in, it doesn't need to be filled in. The period hierarchy is a, a very complicated thing. We don't have any here, which is so complicated. I'd rather everyone just left it alone at the moment. Style again, look it up in the, uh, the manual. Date is the date. One important thing, this is the date the object was made. Um, there are also other historical dates you can record, but what we mostly want in here is the date. This is quite interesting. Um, it should have a date here as well, 1865. 
In this case, it's one date. It seems to have one date. So let's record the fact it says 1865, 1865. So you write that twice. Um, and uh, this enables it to be found by saying, I want everything, for instance, between 1860 and 1870, and then it will find it. Whereas it won't find it if you just have 1865 put in here. So we say, OK. So that's now hidden. But a properly catalogued object should have those numbers. So let's carry on down. Dimensions, again, if you want to edit that, you press the ellipsis. Catalog of remarks is, again, a remarks field, so it can be very long. Let's carry on going down here. <coughs> inscriptions are inscriptions, again, for the protocol on that. Read the manual. Historical attributions is not the classical what is a historical attribution, but as a field we use to put information on to uh, the online collection. And I'll talk more about that when we get to uh, how do I put things online. Uh, signed is for signature. Marks are marks that are on the object. Object history is uh, a narrative about the object history. It doesn't go online. Sometimes these can be quite a mess, and so um, they don't go online. In fact, that's where we might, might put historical attributions, which is an otherwise clean field, which we added just for this purpose. So here we have credit line. Credit line is actually a registration field, and we can't edit it. See, I'm trying to click in it. I can't. Which is kind of a pity because it's actually a mistake in here. There's a semicolon after James King. Uh, provenance is also a registration field, which is actually blanked out here, so you can't know you can't write in it. Cross references here, which again I can't write in here. So this is actually a problem that happens. So I'm glad it happened now. If you're trying to click in a field that you should be able to write in, you hear my loud keyboard, you need to print. Uh, click somewhere in the background. You hear me clicking? There you go. See, now I can click in here. So that's probably because I was trying to click somewhere where I shouldn't do. So now I can type. So, so if you're ever unable to type where you should be able to type, click in the area around here somewhere, anywhere. Big open space here. Click there. Related works. Oh, I didn't tell you what cross-references is. Cross-references are actually bibliographic references relevant to cataloger remarks up here. Cataloger remarks. So if this was actually a properly cataloged object, it would tell you down here what King page 335 actually is. Um, in this case, the cataloger knows who King is. And he's actually the donor. Um, and so he has a very well-known book to the cataloger, and so they just wrote King, page 335. But what it should say, and in fact it should be saying why this is here, um, that should be fully put down here, the actual full reference. Go a bit further down. Here are notes. This is a uh, field we've never used, but it looked nice. When we migrated, I thought, oh, there's a notes field. And so this has been added to the form. And so I don't know what we're going to put in it, but it's for notes. You know, it should be able to put anything in it, really. So then we have these two legacies. These are old data that only the collection uh, technicians will be concerned about. So don't worry about it. So let's quickly look at the other side. Public caption. This actually says nothing, but if it did, it would appear in the public area. So let's look at this one. And, oh, this does have a public caption. It goes here. This shows a woman getting a tattoo, an extremely rare subject. That's oh, quite cool. Let's have a look at it. There you go. Woman getting a tattoo. Okay, back to the database. So that text would go in here. This is a bit of a pain in the ass field because you have to click on it to make it work properly. And whatever, if you cut and paste from somewhere else, it will bring the formatting with it, um, which is a bit of a problem. 
because that formatting will then appear on the collection online and will be different probably from the rest. So you'll want to make sure there is no uh, sort of thing associated with it by using Notepad or something like that to clean it up before you post it, paste it. This is an empty white box. This is actually an empty white box, rather like this big empty white box here. And this links to the sites module. So if this was from a site, it would tell you the site and some information about it here. Uh, which So if you don't have any sites, you're probably thinking, why is this big box in the way here all the time and it's really annoying? It's there for the sites. So let's go to the right. So there are alternate numbers here. Uh, there are a number of alternate numbers. Um, there might be old numbers, old catalog numbers, and they all go in here. Uh, a way of adding a website or something like that to this object is by putting it in here. On it. So that is something else. Alternate numbers, we might need to do another uh, seminar about. Also attributes. Attributes are a whole bunch of different fields. Uh, typically there'll always be what is the primary collection area uh, because that will say this is for, for Japan and so this will relate to a specific curator. So we should have a Japan curator and that Japan curator will know that this is a collection they are responsible for. We'll go down. Description. There is no description of this thing. It's kind of unfortunate, but there is a, a place for description. Quite often this may be long, and so again, this is a big field in reality. You might want to press the ellipsis to, to write. So here we have the media. In fact, this is a way of getting to the, this media. If you click on this, it will take you to the media file. But we'll look at media files another time. Here we have text entries, which again are other groups of fields. Um, this is um, will require a whole other session um, and are a bit more complicated. Here we have published references. Published references are in exhibition history, are old uh, fields from our previous database, which should eventually be surpassed by and for the published references, um, the uh, bibliography module, because this is publications of the object, which should be in, in the uh, bibliography module. Exhibition history similarly should eventually be in the exhibition module. So there may be data in these. Um, what is to be decided with them, we haven't decided yet. So it may, in fact, be published references and a bibliography module entry for it at the same time, same with exhibition history. Um, so we need to decide what we're doing with that before we do anything with it. So that's quite reasonable. So that is the form, and that concludes the, the first uh, of these uh, little videoed uh, webinars. Um, there'll be others for specific uh, purposes, uh, but this is a good start. Thank you.